Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of the ARIS Innovator Demo Series. We're going to talk today about closing the loop, quality management with the ARIS PLM platform this morning. A quick note about the demo series, it runs for 30 minutes and features all demo with no sales pitch. Twice a month, typically bi-weekly, we show you a different capability of the ARIS platform. Once the demo series is complete, you can always go to our website, www.aris.com slash demo series to view the past demo as well as any upcoming demos. We have on the line today Kevin Richard, Product Manager, and demonstrating today Gary Wilmot, Solutions Consultant at ARIS. Gary, take it away. Thank you, Nicole. Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking time to join us today. And the fact that you've taken time is probably a pretty good indication that you are facing challenges in the area of quality management, continuous quality improvement. Those challenges typically involve things such as dealing with large amounts of complex data, originating from a wide variety of sources, both inside and outside your organization, uh, existing in a variety of different formats, and created and added to an update over sometimes long periods of time. So those realities make it a challenge to manage and track all this information in a cohesive and most importantly traceable manner. Failure to do that, however, means running the risk of overlooking opportunities to improve product quality, leaving quality defects unresolved, or repeating the issues that cause the defects in the first place. So at Aris, we, we get that, and we firmly believe that utilizing a unified platform that supports a digital thread methodology is critical to successfully overcoming these challenges and obstacles. So in today's demonstration, we're going to show you how Aris PLM platform allows organizations like yours to introduce a true closed-loop approach to both uh, reactive quality management and proactive quality uh, planning scenarios. So on the screen right now, you see the one and only slide that we're going to have before the live portion of the demo. It's going to serve as a little bit of a preview to the type of items and topics I'll be dealing with in this brief overview demonstration. Those of you involved and experienced in quality management might recognize some of this format here as being uh, very similar and based on the eight disciplines or eight Ds problem solving methodology. If you're not familiar with that, that's fine. This, this breaks down pretty self-explanatory anyway. But the, as part of the 8D methodology, it starts with having a plan, right? We, we need to have a plan, teams working on that, and you'll see that represented at the top of the slide. This is actually a, a, a actual item that you'll see in Aris Innovator, a corrective action plan. Supporting that, reading from left to right across the bottom of the slide, are typically the other uh, stages of the 8D methodology usually initiated with some events. Something happened to, to alert us that there's a problem. Could have been failure on an audit, could have been quality testing uh, generates a nonconformance report, could have been uh, complaints from customers in the field. Next step would be some interim containment. We need to do something now to take action, to react to what's going on. Maybe we need to stop product shipment or uh, some other examples you see here. Really, the cornerstone here gets down to, as part of this plan, digging into and a getting usually a team involved in doing a root cause analysis. What really caused this issue and what can we do to address that? And then that leads on to uh, corrective actions to take care of the immediate problem. And, make, and then, of course, looping it back would be talking about keeping this from happening again, preventive actions. So everything we've talked up in, to that last kind of topic there, preventive action, is what we might call the reactive quality management, uh, things such as tying this back and closing the loop to design quality or process quality documents helps us to incorporate the quality planning aspects of this. Of course, in a brief demo, we're going to only be able to touch briefly on some of these topics, but we'll try to at least explain how this all works together as we get into now the live portion of the demo. Those of you familiar with Aris Innovator, I've logged in using uh, our standard web interface. Those of you not familiar, very briefly, uh, we are basically browser agnostic. You can use all the popular browsers, uh, HTML5 based and we make this very consistent across the different areas of functionality within Aris Innovator. Across the left hand of the screen is what we call our table of contents. I always, uh, when I do a live demo, I just kind of preface things by saying, uh, for demo purposes, 
this particular user that I've logged into in our demo scenario has a wide range of access throughout pretty much the whole AERS platform. In real world implementation, this can be easily streamlined to just present to the user, each individual user, what's important to them. So for today's uh, uh, demo, we're going to focus on quality management. Um, and if you're involved in that, you might just see a uh, interface that shows you that, maybe requirements management, and the information is not relevant to you would not be cluttering up the screen. Thinking back on our slide, we see uh, these items that we talked about as, uh, uh, that were represented are actual items in Aris Innovator out of the box. This is part of the quality uh, systems capability. So these items have all of the capabilities of any other item in Aris Innovator, permissions, life cycles. Some of them have workflows. So if you're familiar with the change management or process control within Aris Innovator, you'll see that also along with under the quality management topic, you can also access them as items that are uh, process oriented and have a workflow. And so, for example, if we were to look at a problem report, I could do a search on anything or just an empty search here in my demo system, and we'll see that we have a listing of the problem reports. In fact, we have one that's already been initiated, and we're going to talk about what that uh, means in our scenario in just a second. As part of workflow, of course, inherent to that is uh, assignments, activities, notifications. So I'm logged in as this user named Mike. If he's a participant on this quality team, he also gets a notification to that same problem report in his in-basket, so can access it, and now we see an audit trail being built up for everyone that's participated or needs to participate. I want to just pause, though. You know, when we talk about gathering all of the information, traceability, and in, in, in a quality event, sometimes, or often most of the time, a quality event might initiate before there's a formal problem report created. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly show you uh, some very powerful capability in Aris Innovator, visual collaboration and discussion. So perhaps there might just be some anecdotal, if you will, conversations that go on. And I look at my conversation list here, kind of reverse chronological order. I noticed that back a while ago, we started to hear some news of complaints about a 3D printer that has been uh, a new model introduced. The new model has a cover. So by clicking on that conversation, I can go right to the item. I can see the, in this case, the top level bomb or an individual part item, whatever is relevant, is shown. And I know exactly what it's talking about, this conversation, and I can access that same conversation from the item itself. One very important thing, I won't be able to go into detail on visual collaboration, unlike chat rooms or applications like Slack or email especially, this is a controlled environment. If I don't have permissions to come and look at this item, the fact that I could see a comment referencing it, I may not even see that comment, or I may be restricted from clicking and coming to where I did here. So it's managed, it's pervasive throughout. I can see it both at a part item. And then as I read through this, some additional uh, input has been given. We've talked about the fact this seems to be isolated to the new product, not the existing product that's been out there. They've confirmed that, and we've decided that this uh, this mandates a problem report. So a conversation can also be um, focused around a document along with the part item. So here I've opened up and we'll start our scenario with our quality management system with a problem report that's already been initiated. So you can see that uh, in the field, problem, uh, customers are seeing with the newer model after running it for a few hours, it shuts down. We need to figure out what that is. So this problem report has been initiated. It has, um, as we've said before, it can have a workflow associated with it so that participants can uh, deal with this. We're just in the kind of mid-stage here, and to keep things moving, we'll just kind of leave it at that stage. But one of the things we talked about is the importance of having this under a cohesive management. As you saw in that opening slide, it's, part, it's going to be part of supporting documents for a plan. So one of the ways, since I'm right here in the problem report as we create it, is to go ahead and write from the problem report, either create a new uh, CAP, corrective action plan, to associate it with, or for sake of time, we also have an existing uh, plan already launched, and we'll go ahead and attach this problem report to it. So now that automatically opens up this top-level item 
that is the corrective action plan. And you can see across here, very similar to what you saw in the opening slide, here are the supporting items that could be documents, events, or actions. So in this case, we now have problem report 09 as part of CAP 005. You're not limited to problem reports. You can create your own custom items out of the box. We give you some of the standard things such as uh, audits, nonconformance reports, and so on. For sake of time, we've also kind of pre-filled in some other supporting information, such as what do we want to do? Let's just stop shipping this product or we figure out what's going on. Again, out of the box, hold notices, purge notices, stop notices. You are free to create your own. And this is just showing the example that I could start at the top level and add items or create them as I go. We want to spend a little more time now on analysis and show you how we support um, a real-world root cause analysis and the supporting documents and teamwork that goes into that. We'll then spend some time uh, after we've addressed that with the following uh, supporting items here, corrective and preventative actions. So again, right from this item, I could go, and if I had some already created, I could add these or create one on the fly. Even more powerful would be to utilize another portion uh, functionality within Ares Innovator, which is our Microsoft Office integration. So here I've opened up a blank Word document. I've already logged in using our Office Integrator. And I want to create a new document. And very powerful here is the ability to utilize templates, which means that we adhere to your company standards that you set up so that we don't have just free form ad hoc documents, but we can actually create, in this case, we'll do a 5Y type of analysis. And we've already set up a template here for my particular scenario format. But certainly, it can be anything that your company needs. And while we're at it, all in one step, we can create this document, initiate it, store it under management into Eris Innovator, and link it to our existing plan. So there's our Kappa 05. Let's do this all in one fell swoop and just give it some title, demo, RCA. And doing that, we'll go ahead now, open up the blank template, and allow us to initiate this document. Now, for sake of time, in the real world, this would become a living document, right? We'll probably have teamwork uh, associated with this, various people giving their input, and uh, ARIS would allow you to manage that document and various uh, versions and revisions of it as people contribute and collaborate on it. For sake of time, what I'll do here is just use some information I have on my clipboard to fill this out and keep the demo moving. So keeping things semi-realistic as much as we can in a very brief demo, we see that uh, the five whys here have been addressed. The main problem is the printer is shutting down. Uh, we see that that's because a, a thermal cutout has been thrown due to excess temperatures after four or so hours. And we zero in now on the root cause uh, of the cooling fan with the cover closed is just not sufficient. So again, very simplified version of what happens in the real world, but it shows you how this document can be created, initiated, tracked, and, uh, and stored in Aris Innovator. So let me just go ahead and do that, close that off, clean up my local work area there, and back in Aris Innovator, if we simply do an update. Of course, in the real world, if I had closed down the cap and then reopened it, you would see it right there. I just left it open in the demo, so I just needed to do a refresh. So we now see that that is a supporting uh, document. I can open that right from the tab in the cap. And another benefit of using the Office Integrator is immediately, as soon as I stored that, we also stored a viewable that when we talk about team collaboration and managing input in that, we immediately have the viewable of this particular uh, document that we just stored. You don't need the native uh, authoring tool. It's available to those that have permissions, and we can do markups and uh, additional uh, conversations and add using visual collaboration that you've already seen. Also, what we've created is a document that supported our effort to, ana to really get down and analyze the root cause. Once that root cause is identified, it can be tracked itself as a separate item within Eris Innovator. And we've, for sake of time, we've already created the uh, representing root cause that we've generated through this analysis. And we've called, called this low performance, performance fan use. 
So now we have both the document and the item that's being tracked in Ares Innovator. And we'll save that away. And you'll see towards the end of the demo how this works to close the loop back to our quality planning capabilities. But let's go ahead and save this off. Moving along, we can uh, go ahead now and determine what corrective actions uh, would be appropriate for this. And you see some of the standard ones here. In our demo today, we're going to, again, focus on bringing this back around, fixing the problem now, closing the loop, so hopefully it never happens again. So to fix this problem, an ECO, after this has all been done, an ECO would most likely have been launched. So we're going to pick it up in midstream. And this will address the design issue. Uh, if we t this is a standard uh, ECO out of the box. If we take a look at that, just give us a little background of where we're at. I'm logged in as Mike. We're in the draft changes area uh, activity. We see Mike is the one potential participant here. So we'll say that Mike uh, has handled the design change. It's accessible right here from the impact matrix. I'm going to open up the what was identified by the root cause analysis as the subsystem that needs to be addressed. In this case, the cooling fans on the extruder. So we'll say that Mike has gone ahead and done the change, and I can see he has by turning on the red line on the bill of materials tab here. And you can see that we've done a quick, simple change to this. We've replaced, struck out this original fan with a high-performance fan. So since that's done, Mike can go ahead and sign off that he's finished his work. This is part of the traceability, of course, inherent in change management and process control in Ares Innovator, available right out of the box. So Mike signs off. This has the ramification of now going ahead and releasing the new Rev B of the extruder with the high performance fans and completing and releasing the ECL. It was easy to see, because we were just looking at the cap, that the ECO was generated because of this original quality event problem report. But down the road, it would be very typical that someone might say, well, this ECO, why did we make this change? Well, from the ECO itself, of course, built in there as innovator, we can do a where used, and we can see the corrective action plan. And for previous demos, we've used it in some others as well. But we can trace back and close that loop. Finally, on the preventive action here, we're going to talk about being on the proactive side, quality management. This is a whole other topic that we actually have some archived webcasts and demos on. I would encourage you to look at our demo series webpage and look for uh, quality planning. But to just demonstrate how this all ties together, I have an existing design quality document that I'll open up. We also support PFMEAs, process uh, failure modes and effect analysis documents. We'll focus on design quality. They're very similar in structure. Briefly, this is a structured document editor. The benefits are that it allows you to hierarchically uh, reference this to parts, designs, top-level bill of materials, and create something that looks very much like an Excel spreadsheet, which might be what you're using right now. But the advantages are that we can go ahead and look at things in a structured environment. If I click on something here, such as an excessive heat problem, it takes me right to that cell in the document. This is formatted. It's context sensitive. So as I work across the columns, if I want to add in information, depending on what column I'm picking in, I don't need to be an expert in Excel formatting, figure out where to insert, insert rows or columns or cells. I can do that directly here or here. So let's go ahead and close this loop by adding in another cause that we've seen for, for overheating. You could create it on the fly, or you've already seen we had this low performance fan um, uh, cause already created and being uh, managed. So let's go ahead and add that here. It now adds it in, and we can fill in the rest of the information. We won't have time to do that, but we can fill in more information. Very key here is you'll see a little green dot. That means we, uh, that's not just text. We've referenced something that's existing and under management. So as you might expect, if we go ahead and save what we've done here, 
down the road, we can access that cause if we have permissions. So we may go out and say, we need to add a little more information to that initial cause we created. Mike has permission to go ahead and make edits. So we'll just do a simple one to demonstrate. We'll say with cover closed, save that. Going back and updating our design quality document, you'll notice, again, this would be the same if I had saved this away, closed it, later on opened it back up. Our little indicator dot has turned to orange that says something is out of date here. Something has changed. Again, if I have permissions to update, I can go ahead and immediately say update that. And now we see the simple change has been incorporated and I can now close the loop on my proactive design quality document. So that in a very high level and streamlined way is what we wanted to demonstrate today about quality systems capabilities within ARIS Innovator PLM. Hopefully we've shown you that we can manage a closed loop Kappa based data system including items, documents, uh, bills of materials and processes and tie this back together in a traceable, manageable uh, manner to close the loop from taking an initial indication that we had a quality issue going through the quality management steps to identify and s solve the problem and then update and make sure that we track that information for future uh, quality, continuous quality as we continue with this product design so we don't repeat the same problems. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole. And we have a few minutes if there's any questions. Uh, we'll do best we can with the limited amount of time we have to address any questions that we can hear or set up a follow-up later. Thank you, Gary. Make sure to enter in any questions you might have into the Q&A panel after seeing that demonstration. We seem to have a few submitted questions now. Can color coding be applied to stop, ship, hold notice, etc.? Hi, Nicole. This is Kevin. Um, the answer is yes, and it's really part of uh, standard item type configuration uh, with properties. There's the styling attributes that can be applied, which can affect how these items are displayed in what we call our search grid or our requirements grid. Okay. Um, what version of quality systems is used for this demo? Um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, that this is version SP9. Quality management system is uh, actually has two uh, components to it. Quality planning, which as Gary mentioned, is really our uh, proactive or what you do to uh, mitigate risk in the quality process, and quality systems, which is our reactive, which is what was demonstrated today. And that functionality was released with SP9. Yes, that's uh, this is SP9 that I'm currently demoing. Um, also, that first question kind of triggered something. Um, Nicole, could you just give me back presenter very briefly, and, and I'll just show in about 30 seconds something that uh, addresses that first question. Sure. So we talk about color coding. So yes, you can see we have we have the ability, such as in any other uh, field, uh, in customizing the forms for color coding. And of course, then when we go to the search grid, we can sort by and see color coding here. This is just one example. There could be other fields that could be color coded. Also, when it comes to getting a high level view, uh, that's an excellent point. We also have, um, if we go back, we also have the ability to uh, create reports. We give you a couple simple sample ones out of the box. So here's uh, tracking kind of uh, at a quality, maybe executive level to see what's going on throughout the organization. The ability to track what uh, caps have been generated, where they are in their status, or if you want a particular status about this particular uh, item itself. Again, just simple out of the box reports that gives us the status uh, of any of the supporting items, you can feel free, especially using our self-service reporting uh, capability to generate your own that fit your own organizational needs. Okay, back to you, Nicole. Thanks, Carrie. Um, 
All right, so next question here. Is this presentation available on the demo series webpage also? Yes, it will be available soon after today. It will be on the demo series page for reference. Next question, is the quality suite part of a subscriber service? So uh, quality management system, as I described, has two components to it. Both of them are open. As a subscriber, you have the ability to publish, uh, which is more of a feature associated with quality planning, your ability to extract this information uh, within Excel, and there are other, other um, abilities to export as well. Those are subscriber only. But the quality data, the quality management system, uh, is, uh, is is part of our standard open product. Great. Thanks, Kevin. The FMEA, DFMEA, et cetera, are part of archived webinars, question mark? Yeah, um, so you there are demonstrations of this capability on the uh, demo series website, and uh, they are part of quality planning. So if you, you search for quality planning, you'll see past webinar demo uh, series events on that in particular. And if you have any trouble finding those on our demo series page, we also have a great resources page with a demos tab that has a whole list of all kinds of ARIS demos. If you have any other questions on FMEA or DFMEA, you can always get back in touch with us or if you have any problems finding other videos including those aspects. Um, moving on to the next question. What version of Innovator are you using for this demo? We did answer that. They're currently using 11 SP5 and do not have the analysis and containment item in the TOC. Is there a way to integrate these capabilities into V11 SP5? Uh, I believe, and we'd have to check with our um, some of the more technical folks here, that uh, that would require updating to SP9. If you're a subscriber, that's just part of what we do for you. But the ability to then take future functionality and backport it to earlier service packs would be something that we'd have to direct to our uh, the folks here who who uh, are, are responsible for that. So we're going to have to follow up on that question. All right, great. It looks like we've answered all questions. If anyone has anything remaining in these last few seconds here, we're pretty much at time. Just let me know now. Otherwise. Thank you all for submitting the questions you did submit. I'm going to leave you with what is upcoming. On October 12th, we will have a special demo within our demo series. It will be featured on engineering.com, and the topic will be enabling your digital thread with the ARIS PLM platform. So be sure to register for that. The following demo on October 26th will be discussing 3D throughout the life cycle. Again, you can register for all upcoming webinars and view any past webinars at www.aris.com slash demo series. We would love for you all to join the Open Aris PLM community. We've got blogs, knowledge bases with a lot of great information, forums, community projects for you to access and contribute to when ready. With that, I don't see any more questions, so we thank you for joining us today and look forward to having you on next time. Thank you and have a good day.